Hey, what's happening first 2021? My name is Carson Zimmerman. I'm going to be talking to you about an area that's super passionate to me. The title of my talk today is Taking Your Detection Program to the Next Level. Thanks for listening. A little bit about me. I've been working in security operations here for well over 15 years now. Today, I'm a SOC investigations team lead at Microsoft. Previous to that, I was a SOC engineer, analyst, and consultant while at MITRE. If you haven't checked it out already, I encourage you to have a look at my book. It's worth noting today that I'm not speaking on behalf of my employer, past or present. So let's get to the talk. When we think of our customers, the people that the SOC serves and the SOC the supports, the people that we're defending, they send us data. And then a miracle occurs inside the SOC, and out of it comes magic and breaches. So when we send them data, they think they're totally monitored. Is this true? We know better. Our reality is that when we accept data into the SOC, we, it's not just a matter of collecting that data. It's about generating the right amount of the right data in the first place, storing it, running detections, performing analysis, and supporting response across many layers of the stack, host, service, applications, and network. So it takes a lot more than just collecting data to be monitored. On top of that, there's too much for us as defenders to do. We have too many types of systems these days. It's not just about the on-prem host anymore. We all know that. It's about cloud, it's about IoT, it's about mobile, and it's about things that are not Windows. On top of that, we have too many detections across the kill chain, across device types, and in terms of generic versus uh, customer-specific detections. If you look on the right, look at the cloud stack. You know, in the past, we could say, ah, put a sensor on it and call it good, right? You can't do that anymore. In fact, a lot of cases now, especially with the cloud, there's not a network to monitor as such, right? There may not be a host for us as the SOC to monitor. That may be on the cloud provider. So what are we going to do? So there are ways we lie to ourselves and the outcome. Um, we collect data without setting expectations. And as a result, customers think monitoring is happening when it's not. We think we're creating detections for all of the things, but the reality is, is that we never have enough time and resources and it doesn't get done. We run detections without testing them. As a result, the detections may not work. And then finally, we put one sensor on, as I said before, and we call it monitored. But major blind spots remain. None of this is new, folks, but it's become much more acute in the last five years. So, too long didn't read. The point of today is be true to yourselves, be true to your customers, and don't reinvent the wheel. The purpose of my talk today is, talk, is how to bring your detection program to the next level today and tomorrow. So I'm gonna break that down into a several pieces for you. First, we're gonna talk about engaging the customer. How do I work with them to formulate a shared sense of situational awareness and perform purposeful planning for monitoring detection and analytic investments? Next, we're gonna talk about how do we leverage everything we can, especially commodity solutions. After that, we're going to talk about creating and maintaining detections and analytics using a consistent and accurate methodology and including things like testing. And then finally, I'm going to touch on today, how do we want to uh, measure our coverage? And uh, looking forward, folks, it's not just one dimension. It's actually four. Let's talk about um, customer engagement. You, as the SOC, should be engaging with your customers on a routine basis. A lot of people are like, what the heck are we going to do here? They have no idea. Trust me, folks, it's not rocket science. It's actually straightforward. From the customer perspective, they're telling us about what's new in their business and, for, and specifically new and changed services. They're giving us a sense of context and their perceptions and criticality and risk. They're giving us input on scanning, monitoring, hygiene, detections, all that kind of stuff. The higher the engagement customer, of course, the more we're gonna get from this. And I'll talk about differentiated value in just a few minutes. From our end as the security org, 
we should be responding in kind and saying, what have we done for you lately as the security shop? That means new sensors, new detections, new log feeds, new insights on threats, campaigns, and incidents. We should be talking to them about their hygiene and compliance status. In fact, I could have a whole other talk on how do we deliver that in a consistent and repeatable means. I should be able to go meet any customer at any level of the org chart and say, what is your compliance um, status at your layer of abstraction for all the things that are you're responsible for? And then finally, any new metrics and asks. Again, don't drown them in 100 metrics. Don't drown them in 100 hygiene pieces, all right? Talk to them about the most important things that are going on, you know, this month, this quarter, this semester, this fiscal. Let's break this down into to differentiated value. A standard customer that we peanut butter the same capabilities across look like the following right, or could look like the following. They're gonna get the same low cost network perimeter protections. They're gonna get a standard EDR, a standard set of SIEM analytics and detections. If you're not using the SIEM, maybe SOAR, maybe big data, maybe all of these things. Uh, some kind of routine engagement, perhaps semi-annually, um, and then a standard set of hygiene controls, again, that we peanut butter across everybody. And then for the special customers, the ones that are high engagement, high needs, high risk, high criticality, the special folks, they're going to get all of what the standard folks get, plus more frequent engagement, um, lower fidelity, or perhaps newer detections, ones that are chattier. Um, we're going to give them uh, detections that are specific uh, to their environment, perhaps some tailored things just for them. Um, we're going to potentially deputize members of their team. A lot of these folks are like, I want to play analyst. And they go off and they do things and they pester you all the time and they, they can feel like a nuisance. Don't make them feel like a nuisance. Bring them in. Have a specific set of rules of engagement on how you bring them into the SOC. Make them an analyst 10% of their time. Involve them in your, your hunt involve them in creating detection specific to their environment. Maybe it's not sustained. Maybe you bring them in so one day out of every month. They'll love you for it. And then finally, we could potentially give them access to their own slice of data, whether they're deputized or not. Again, set the expectations around how we want them to play. For example, don't just escalate to your management when you see something you think is bad. Right? Define those escalate, escalation paths so they don't um, go, uh, you know, rogue. So let's talk about building situational awareness and differentiated value in partnership with our customers. At the bottom here, you have both these parties represented. Now, when I wrote uh, the 10 strategies of World Class Cybersecurity Operations Center, gosh, it was uh, six or seven years ago now, if you can believe that. I can't. Um, I talked about three pillars of cyber situational awareness, network, mission, threat. I'm here today to talk to you about five. The first is the technological environment, IT, OT, mobile, cloud. If it's got an IP address, there you go. Uh, data. This is one of the things um, that's diverged from the first edition of the book. Um, is we're now talking about data as its own pillar, particularly when we talk about data that's sitting in the cloud or sitting somewhere else, sitting in a, a partner environment. We have our mission uh, pillar that's all about how do we map the risks, the threats, the priorities, the consequences of intrusions back to the ITOT, et cetera. We have the regulatory environment. This is also new. We have to recognize whether we love it or not that there's certain regulations, certain laws, certain rules, certain compliance, um, pick your favorite that we're subject to. And then finally, the threat, both internal and external. And on top of that, we build both our instrumentation strategy and our data collection strategy in partnership between the SOC and the customer. And then on top of that, the detections and the analytics. Again, we build some of this that's peanut buttered across everybody, and then we can differentiate for specific groups that are high needs or um, high engagement. Let's talk about how we plan that concretely. Now, think about planning like code development. Oh, mind blown. What does that look like? 
What that looks like is a couple things. First of all, routine planning. It could be quarterly, it could be semester, it could be annual. Probably don't want to go much longer than a gap than say a year. Uh, but the point is, is that you're sitting down as a SOC and talking about your investments and you're also engaging your customer, usually separately, about those investments. Now, bring that into something that you like. You could be using OKRs, for example, objectives and key results. Regardless, then derive your work tracking in some kind of framework, Azure DevOps, Jira, whatever makes you happy, right? Stack rank your asks for those high need customers. Prioritize them, if not stack rank them, and keep that list. Because when they come to you and say, oh, here's something new shiny, or here's a new service, you can make a very clear and transparent conversation with them about where does that fall on the list? This will help you from getting randomized, folks, All right? And then on top of that, guess what? Go use Agile, Scrum, DevOps, one of those wonderful buzzwords that were, many of us are living today on how we actually execute that. Uh, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever makes you happy. I'm gonna come back to some of that planning and execution in a little bit. But first, I wanna talk about censoring strategies. When we think about censoring different parts of the enterprise, as I intimated earlier, in the olden days, we slap a NIDS on it and call it good. That's not the case anymore. Uh, I have, and I know lots of folks ha who have, um, spent a lot of energy building up custom frameworks for monitoring. Um, you can save a lot of money, it can be really amazing, it can be super rewarding. I'm here to tell you today, I would encourage you to strongly consider using something off the shelf. I'm gonna talk about the host end of that in a second, but that also looks like um, on the network. If you're deploying your own network sensors, great, go leverage something like Zeek and Suricata together. If you're talking about SIEM and big data, there's wonderful analytics already out there. Go look at CAR, Sigma, or what is in your vendor's marketplace or GitHub. And again, I've got links at the end, folks. Right? Also consider letting your customer's data stay in place. You don't need to backhaul everything. Some of the best socks I've worked with, while they had their big ornate SIEM architecture, the big ornate big data architecture, that was one data leak lake amongst over a hundred. And the other hundred was data that they used in place, owned by the owning service team or business unit. And then finally, with respect to cloud, demand that your customers enable the built-in logging and detections that come with their cloud platform. This is an area of huge growth right now, all right? Demand that your cloud provider deliver that as an inbuilt capability, right? Building detections for a hundred different cloud resource types. I'm sorry, folks, you can do a couple, you could do a dozen, but don't expect to do a hundred. You're not gonna have that time. You're gonna have to leverage detections, commodity detections that someone else wrote. Let's talk about host for a second. When we think about host monitoring, there is a rich set of telemetry that we need to collect. Process creation, network connections, authentication such as login and logout. You know, those are 4688s, 4624s, so on and so forth. Network events, the 5100 series, which are super voluminous by the way, right? Anybody who's ever done host flows knows. Network events from the host, super voluminous. I could go on, kernel stuff, drivers, storage, uh, user changes, group changes, blah, 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 right? There's all of these. Now, you could go and deploy some outrageous Windows event collection and forwarding WEC WEF framework. You could do ETW, you could do Sysmon. On Linux, you could go do a big Audit D uh, collection rig. And many people do, and this is good stuff, right? I've been there, I've done that. This is like shoveling snow, folks, right? You do all that, you bring it into your SIM, you tune your SIM, right? You scale it out. You write all your detections. You're like, yeah, we did awesome. Or you could deploy an EDR. And most of that is done for you. Now, are you going to get absolutely everything you did versus that custom rig? Maybe yes, maybe no. But you got to think about the investment, right? 
Think about how much all that manual work took versus using an off-the-shelf capability, right? As a SOC, we're not going to have the time to reach parity that that EDR vendor did in terms of all those different host level detections. And while we could totally go in, we could build some process creation trees with 4688s, and we could throw it into Neo4j and paint beautiful pictures, right, versus looking at them on a screen, some EDR products are going to do that for you. So think about the investment here, folks. Think about whether is that really where you want to put your resources. Let's talk about focus, all right? So my message so far is don't write those generic detections. Use an, an existing detection library. Again, if you're not going down the commercial route, I've already mentioned a couple of the resources for you there. Think about focusing your detection investments and your analytic investments on what's specific to your environment and your critical environments, custom apps, specific customers, scenarios that should never occur, right? We've been talking about impossible travel detections for nearly 20 years, right? We've been doing this since I started. Is it good stuff? Yeah, but that's an example of yet another detection that in the generic sense should be provided for you. Um, think about specific incidents from your past, from your customers, from your partners, from your competitors, right? Think about your hunt, bringing in your hypotheses, your hunt traps, and your findings back into routine detections. This is the source of the inspiration that helps us bring that detection backlog. We think about doing agile scrum and managing our detection workloads just like code development. Speaking of which, let's talk about that metadata. So your detections should be tracked in some kind of framework where you can capture all of this metadata. It could be Azure DevOps, it could be Jira, it could be something else, whatever makes you happy, right? Think about a custom detection type that captures the name of the detection, its ID, who and when it was created on and last modified, its status, is it in production, is it in dev, is it retired, etc. Uh, what uh, source telemetry is required to light it up? What's its scope in terms of customers? Is it global or not? What assets is it, is it pointed at? Is it Windows? Is it Linux? Is it the cloud, etc.? What's the intent of the detection? What known false positives have we seen? What to do next if an analyst gets this? What should they do? Where should they go? Who should they call? Um, what, how does this map to the kill chain? How does this map to the attack framework? And notes and discussion. Now, I've noticed organizations do this and then something else happens, especially if they're not tracking their detections as code, though some do. This is pretty cool. If you can actually articulate your detections as code that you load via CICD, I'll mention that in a second. If we think about Drift and we think about our detection library separate from how we're tracking our detections, let's talk about how to address that issue. They'll drift where the detections, what's actually going on in prod, doesn't match what we're tracking. So first of all, think about a parent-child relationship between your detection work tracking and the features, user stories, epics, and whatnot that sit above it. Make sure that your detection IDs are surfacing in metadata for the alerts that are firing in your SIEM, SOAR, or big data platform, wherever it is that you're doing your detections, all right? The crucial piece is do that join based on the detection ID from the actual alert that fired back to that metadata, right? Using whatever makes you happy. You could do this in real time in streaming. You could do it afterwards using federated query, whatever works. And at that point, you're making that clear comparison so that if there's a gap and there's drift, you use that feedback loop of the analyst to make sure that you're addressing it. Now, like I said just a moment ago, also think about using CICD, continuous integration, continuous delivery, to push code um, as, excuse me, push detections as code into your detection platform. More and more detection platforms are supporting this. And when you do it right, really cool. Let's talk about um, measuring coverage. Now, historically, most security operation centers and cybersecurity apparatuses will measure um, coverage, such as monitoring and scanning, along one dimension. This should be seem 
very, very familiar to all of this. We look at percentage and or absolute number of coverage based on some denominator we've established through asset tracking. Now, this is good and it's necessary. And by the way, don't drive your coverage to 100% because you'll always be chasing that last 1% or that last 0.1% but also don't drive that last 0.1% or 1% or 5% for the following reason. You will take time and effort and results away from the other three dimensions that I'm gonna talk about right now. The next dimension, thank you MITRE, your tax dollars at work, my former employer, is attack um, kill chain, excuse me, attack framework and kill chain coverage, All right? It's becoming more and more common for EDRs, SEAMs, um, and other instrumentation capabilities to actually give this um, mapping for you. Next, we think about the times of system, types of systems and resources that are being monitored. This is increasingly important when we're talking about not just on-prem anymore and not just Windows. It's extremely important in cloud. In fact, to anyone starting new, thinking about how do we measure our coverage, I urge you, to make sure that your system is extensible so that when a new uh, a platform, a new cloud resource type comes across, that you can build your model around that new uh, type so that you have those denominators, not just for systems, but for all this other cloud, IoT, OT, ICS data stuff that at some point you're going to be responsible for. And then finally, we need to think about the height of the computing stack. Again, most relevant in on-prem, but also in some parts of the cloud, particularly IaaS, network, host level, OS and application layer, right? We could be doing really, really awesome at the OS layer and completely ignore everything else. Those are blind spots, folks. And we can use the data to tell that story. Tell that story, not just in truth telling to our management and our customers about what we're doing, but also to get the resources that we're missing. Finally, let's talk about testing our detections. There's principally really three ways to do this today. The first is breach as a service, BAS or BAS. Um, folks know it by different names. These are both open source or commercial frameworks that allow you to actually light up various adversary activities on um, different parts. Historically, they've been done on-prem, but increasingly we see them available for the cloud. Next are unit tests. Mind blown, right? Use unit tests to test your detections, just like they were code, folks. For every detection you create, have a harness for it. Have something to stimulate the detection to make sure it's, it's firing. And don't consider it production until you've proven it works. And then finally, red and purple teaming. Lots of buzz about purple teaming. I love purple teaming. Let's be precise about what we mean about purple teaming, okay? Regardless of what you call it, regardless of what you're doing, uh, be it your, your engagement model um, or, or the scope or what have you, uh, these activities help keep the SOC humble and they help illuminate the blind spots that these other approaches might not necessarily do, especially in places where we don't think our coverage is that great. So in conclusion today, I'd like to say, be true to yourself, your analysts and your customers. When you collect a set of data, be clear about what you will do with it. Collecting data in just in case with no detection or monitoring might be okay, but set that expectation. Moving up from that routine vanilla detections, analysis and response, and then building on top of that specialized or customer specific scenarios. I've run in many situations where people were giving data to the SOC and they're like, and then no alerts fired. And they're like, what do you mean? Weren't you monitoring us? And they said, no. We're just collecting your data and outrage ensues. Avoid that situation, folks. Ledge, leverage everything that you can. Don't reinvent in the wheel if you can avoid it. The old slap a sensor on it and call it good strategy doesn't fully work anymore, folks. We have an exploding variety of monitoring scenarios, particularly around the cloud. We are forced to leverage, at least in part, commodity solutions. So here are some resources for you um, that I mentioned during my talk, including some past presentations that I've de delivered. Um, thank you for your time. Again, be true to yourselves, be true to your customers, drive that transparency, drive that engagement. Thank you.